Where will you be when your sister sings? And what does it have to do with drinking a glass of water? Jakarta, Mexico City, Kolkata, Miami. Hundreds of millions of people live in drowning cities, some of which could be wiped off the map in our lifetime. Their citizens are fighting harder than ever to stay afloat. It affect the houses, it affect the, the, the livelihood of the people. The carbon dioxide we're emitting is trapping sunlight and warming the planet. In the last 25 years, all the thermal energy heating the oceans adds up to as much as 3.6 billion atom bombs. That's melted ice, raised sea levels, and made extreme weather even more extreme. In just a few decades, storms and floods that used to hit once a century could strike many coastal cities every single year. But climate change is only half the story. In sprawling megacities from Jakarta to Lagos, the bigger problem is that the land itself is literally sinking. In some river deltas, land is subsiding 10 times faster than sea levels are rising. Sinking combined with sea level rise could make coastal areas uninhabitable. And few cities, if we are not careful, uh, will be wiped out from the map. This is because we've redirected rivers and built cities on soft soils. The ground isn't just solid. There's also water and air beneath your feet. But people across the world have dug deep wells and pumped out the groundwater. Less water means less pressure pushing up on the land above it, so the soils get squashed and the cities sink. This is how much four major Asian cities are falling by each year. It may not look like much, but it quickly adds up. Over the last century, Bangkok has sunk by more than one metre, Shanghai by more than two metres, Italy's Po Delta by more than three metres, and eastern Tokyo by more than four metres. Parts of California have shrunk by the height of a house. The Indonesian capital Jakarta is the worst hit. Imagine a baby born there today. By the time that child turns 30, almost the entire coastal area of the city will be underwater. Crippling floods have struck Jakarta again and again. On New Year's Eve 2019, the city received the most rainfall it had recorded in a single day. Earlier that year, the president of the world's fourth most populous country had already announced he was moving the capital from the sinking Jakarta to the island of Borneo. So why is Jakarta sinking so fast? Well, Indonesia's groundwater problems are worse than most. Like Dakar and Manila, Jakarta's rivers are full of plastic and waste. Our government can only produce 60% uh, of the supply of uh, water uh, with a uh, piping. So 40% uh, of people uh, still rely on the groundwater. Add to that the fact that Jakarta sits on swampy land, is home to 13 rivers, and is among the most densely populated cities in the world. But Jakarta isn't alone. Most river deltas are sinking faster than they would naturally, and the damage is rippling in land, destroying crops and raising the price of staples like rice and wheat. This kind of disaster is like a silent killer. How much worse can it really get? Honestly, a lot. A study last year found that scientists have wildly underestimated the number of people exposed to coastal flooding. Not because they don't know how high sea levels are rising, but because they don't know how low the land actually lies. You would think that the scientific community and governments would know the elevation of coastal land, but it turns out that for most of the globe's coast, we had been relying on satellite data and satellite sensors, and those sensors couldn't distinguish rooftops and treetops from the ground. Climate Central scientists estimate three times as many people are at risk of coastal flooding than we thought before. Many live on the same river deltas that are rapidly subsiding. Now, the study doesn't account for coastal defences, like sea walls or berms or levees. So it's not like these cities are actually doomed, but it does show there's less room for them to fall. And even if your land is currently protected by levees or berms, it means 
means that the bowl you're in is deeper than you thought. This spells catastrophe for citizens who can't afford to move as the water presses in. There is actually good news. We still have time to act. It is important what cities like Jakarta and Bangkok can learn from the successful example of cities like Tokyo and Shanghai. Some cities that dropped meters last century have pretty much stopped sinking. Tokyo and Shanghai restricted how much groundwater citizens could extract and recharged water supplies that had run dry. With those simple steps, they reduce subsidence to just one centimetre each year, which is actually kind of manageable. But in cities like Jakarta, residents don't have easy access to other sources of drinking water. The government would first have to spend years cleaning up rivers before it could pipe enough water across the country. Instead, Jakarta's mostly putting its hopes in building a giant wall. But experts say this just delays the problem and isn't even the best way to spend the money. If we do the water management, it's only 10 billion, yeah. Uh, if we do the uh, sea wall, it's a 40 billion. The tricky thing is, even if Jakarta solves land subsidence, its future is still very much in our hands. Scientists say we can limit sea level rise to less than half a metre this century by rapidly cutting our emissions. Now, that much extra water would still be devastating for coastal cities and would turn lives upside down. But it does mean the cities themselves could survive the century. The planet's heating up and the clock is ticking. So if you liked what you saw, then hit subscribe, tell your friends, and let us know in the comments how people in your city are coping.